questions. So, ladies, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Very auspicious day, it's uh, Maha Shivratri, um, the appearance of Lord Shiva or the night of Lord Shiva. Um, very interesting personality uh, who wanted to, uh, we wanted to just um, discuss. He's, he's a very difficult tattva to understand. There's Vishnu Tattva, there's Jiva Tattva, there's Shiva Tattva, and Shiva Tattva is a category of its own. So let's see if we can um, try to uh, delve into the nectar of this wonderful personality. Okay. So Shivatri occurs every month on the 14th day of the waning moon. Mahashivratri happens once a year, some say twice a year. So this is Mahashivratri. It's a great night of Shiva. Ratri means night. Shiva means Shiva. On this day, Shaivites, followers of Lord Shiva, fast and celebrate all night by prayers to Lord Shiva in order to obtain their desires. Invariably, um, the desires will be material. And Lord Shiva is very kind. He fulfills material desires. Vaishnavas worship Lord Shiva on this day in order to receive his blessings to become a de better devotee of Lord Krishna. Because he is himself regarded to be the topmost Vaishnav. So who else uh, but to pray to him for that? So there's a few prayers uh, which are given in various scriptures. Uh, oh, Shetrapala Shiva, protector of the Dham, you are certainly very merciful being kind to me, please. Give me love for Krishna. So these have nice prayers which we can say to Lord Shiva. Oh Shiva Ji, Shankar, you are completely full Puna. You fulfill all the desires of devotees. Therefore, seeing you, I'm offering this prayer. Please fulfill my desires. Let me have unflinching bhakti onto Krishna and onto you who are completely surrendered onto Krishna. And then there's a prayer in the Srimad Bhagavatam. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you, Lord Shiva, or Rudra, who are the reservoir of all potencies, the reservoir of all knowledge, and the master of everyone. In the Bhakti Ratnakar, I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Gopeshwar, Gopishwar, who is merciful Lord Shiva himself. He removes all troubles and grants spiritual love in Bindavan. Then there's the uh, Sri uh, Samalpa Kalpadruma, text number 103. Oh Shiva, oh gatekeeper of Bindavan, oh you who are worshipped, accompanied by Uma, Parvati, oh you who carry the moon in your hair, oh Lord, worshipped by Sanandana Kumar, Sanat Kumar, and Narman, oh Gopeshwar the de worshipful deity of the gopis, desiring that you bestow your love upon me, love for the lotus feet of the divine couple, Shishirata Madhav, who performed joyous pastimes in Vrindavan. I offer my obeisances unto you again and again. So really nice uh, prayers. And then this one is from the Vishnu Sahasranam. And it says, Sri Rama Rama Rameti, Rame Rame, Mano Rame, Sahasra Nam Tat Tulyam, Ram Nam Varna, var, Varanane. Lochiva addresses his wife Durga, O Parvati, O Varanana, lovely faced woman. I chant the holy name of Ram, 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 and thus constantly enjoy this beautiful sound. This holy name of Ramachandra is equal to 1,000 holy names of uh, Lord Vishnu. So this is really very interesting. Chanting the name of Ram three times is equal to chanting um, 1,000 names of Lord Vishnu. So uh, Mahashivata is celebrated for many reasons. The appearance of Lord Shiva, it's also celebrated, uh, celebrating when Lord Shiva dr drinks the poison, the neg poisonous negativity to protect the world. This is when the 
uh, demons and the demigods got together to churn the ocean, the first thing that came out of the churning was the poison, <laughs> which Lord Shiva very, very mercifully drank. And he keeps it in his throat and is known famously as Nilakant. His throat is bluish. It's also a celebration of the night when Lord Shiva performs a heavenly dance of creation, pers per pers per preservation and destruction. Is also known as Nataraj, famously known as Nataraj. It's also the night when Shiva and Parvati get married. So this is the wedding party, going to the marriage ceremony place. And this is the, the accompanied um, personalities who are with Lord Shiva. <laughs> Quite a fearful bunch, some of them. <laughs> See the reaction of the bride's family. What's going on here? <laughs> and this is Lord Shiva. You can see the half moon there distinguishes him from anybody else. So who is he? <laughs> Lord Krishna is identified by Guru Shadu Shastra as the Supreme Personality Godhead and the source of all material and spiritual worlds. When Lord Krishna wants to be in touch with this material world, he transforms into Lord Shiva. The Lord's glance, Mahavishnu's glance, wakes up material nature. So Lord Shiva is actually the same as Lord Krishna, but it's also different at the same time, just like milk and yogurt. So milk and yogurt are essentially non-different. They're both milk, but they're milk, milk products. Yoga is a product of milk. And milk is milk. One can use milk to make ghee, cheese, ice cream or yogurt, but one cannot turn yogurt into milk. So in that sense, it's a little different. Shiram yatada devikara visheshi yogat sanjayate natatha patak hasti hetu yam sambutam apitatha sammupaiti karyat govindamadi pusham tamaham bhajami. Just as milk is transformed into curd by the action of acids, yet yeah, if Effect curd is neither the same as nor different from its cause, the milk. So I adore the primeval Go Lord Govinda, of whom the state of Shambhu is a transformation for the performance of work of destruction. So this is from the Brahma Samhita, text number 45 of chapter 5. Very famous verse. So but theologically, Shiva is both God and yet different from God as well. Because of Lord Shiva's intimate contact with this material world, especially the quality of ignorance. He's not in ignorance. He's, got, he's in charge of ignorance. The souls in this world may not receive the same spiritual restoration by worshipping him as by worshipping Vishnu. So if we're worshipping Lord Shiva as the supreme, then that may not give us the same benefit result as worshipping Vishnu the uh, destination will be different. Destination of those who worship Shiva, if they're worshiping properly in the proper mood, will be Kailash. But the destination of one who worships Vishnu or Krishna is actually into the spiritual world, um, Vaikuntha or Golokandama. However, Lord Shiva holds the keys to leave this material world He's got the, uh, he's, he's, he's holding those keys through the door to leave the world. And Lord Krishna holds the keys for the soul to enter the spiritual world. So this is an interesting way to look at it. His devotees tend to be of three types, the ghosts, the hobblings, and the demons. Then the reason for that is he gives shelter to anybody and everyone. He's so merciful, so kind. He'll go out looking for those who are the most destitute and give them shelter. This is the kindness of Shiva. But they're a little freaked out sometimes, the, uh, those devotees. And the yogis, the pasvis, they also worship Shiva. These are the um, really austere yogis. And then those who want to gain material possessions, which is the vast majority. Lord Shiva is superior to Lord Brahma 
And because that's because Lord Brahma is an empowered soul. He's an ordinary jiva, but he's got special powers given to him by Krishna. The Shiva is not quite on the same level as Vishnu. This is an interesting uh, um, flowchart showing Krishna and the different avatars that are incarnations, expansions who come from Krishna. And then we have this Karandakshaya Vishnu who expands as Garbhadakshaya Vishnu into every universe and from his glance um, manifests Lord Shiva effectively. So this is the trinity the famous trinity, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. So there's an uh, analysis done by one of the Goswamis of the qualities possessed by each of the different categories, 50 uh, qualities possessed in full by the Jiva is considered to be Brahma. 55, add another five to those 50, and you've got 55, that's Lord Shiva. Add another five, and that's Lord Vishnu. Add another four, that's Lord Krishna. Of course, he has many more qualities than 64, but this is just an indication, this idea of the differences between the different personalities. It is therefore said that Lord Shiva is a unique living being who merits his own category known as Shiva Tattva. His abode is in Mount Kailash. Beyond this world, is his abode is Shivlo as between the material world and Vaikuntha. So this is manifestation of Kailash. He lives there by meditation, through meditation. So this is the idea, this, uh, beyond the Brahma Jyoti is Kailash, and beyond Kailash is Vaikuntha. Lochiva is one of the Gunavatas in charge of mode of ignorance. And at the end, he destroys the universe at the appropriate time. Lord Shambhu Shiva is regarded as the greatest amongst the devotees of Lord Vishnu. Vaishnav Nam Nita Shambhu. Shambhu. This is in the Bhagavatam 12, 13, 16. He has also many names. Sadashiva, original form which resides between material and spiritual worlds. So Lord Shiva has a, a spiritual form, eternal, a Vishnu Tattva form, but when he connects with this material world, he becomes the Rudra or the Shiva. Shambhu means auspicious, Shiva means auspicious. Nataraj, king of dancers, Rudra, enraged form of Shiva. Dakshina Murti, yogi for, yoga form of Shiva. Vishwanath, Lord of the Universe, Mahadev, Chief of the Demigods, Shankar, Giver of Knowledge, Nilkan, Blutro, Bolina, Simple, Ashutosh, Easily Pleased. Wonderful names. He's got a lot more, of course. We've just given a few. The worship of Shiva. He's amongst the most widely worshipped deity in Bharat. And generally is worshipped in the form of the Shivling or the Jyotir link. And uh, Shiv Puran describes the origin of the Linga as the beginningless and endless cosmic pillar, stumba of fire, the cause of all causes in this material world. So within this uh, Linga, there's different aspects to it. Um, and this is what we, uh, we often pour milk over and worship him. The 12, major 12 Jyotilings, uh, Shiva temples of Bharat, such as Varanasi, Somnath, are particularly frequented on Mahashiva. So today's a busy day. Varanasi uh, is considered to be the city specially loved by Shiva and is one of the holiest places of pilgrimage in Bharat. This is, this is the wish, famous Vishwanath temple there, beautiful temple. Often his worshippers pray to Shiva to gain material wealth, almost like a business transaction. It's not necessarily selfless devotion. I'll worship you, you please give me. <laughs> According to the Vaishnavas, um, the authorized method of worship of Shiva is described by the Rudra Sampadaya, known also as the Vishnu Swami Sampadaya. 
which is an authorized Vaishnav lineage started by Shiva himself, in which Shiva is worshipped as the greatest devotee of Vishnu. Shiva is bathed with milk and belpatra leaves, especially today. So what are his qualities? Very compassionate, gives shelter to those who everyone else has rejected. So he often resides in the funeral places where the ghosts and hobblings live. He gives them shelter. Very kind-hearted. This is a really interesting picture. Everybody wants to bathe Lord Shiva at the same time. He's giving milk to those who are very unfortunate. He's very humble, he's gatekeeper of many holy places. So Krishna gave him the benediction of being uh, Gopeshwar as well in Vrindavan. So he looks after, he, see, he keeps a tab on who to let in and who not to let in. He's easily pleased, known as Ashutosh, and the example is given in the 10th canto, which we will come to shortly in the 88th chapter where a devotee worships him. And his, his mode of worship is to destroy himself. And Shiva comes and says, hey, what do you want, you fool? <laughs> and he said, yes, I want to, whoever's head I touch, I want it to blow up into a million pieces. It's a really ridiculous request. But he grants it. And then this crazy fellow runs after Shiva to put his hand on his head to destroy him. So this is the mood of the, some of the uh, followers of Shiva. They don't really, it's not devotion, it's more of a business transaction. Peaceful, very, Shiva is very peaceful. He's constantly meditating on the Lord. See a lot of pictures of Lord Shiva, he's just meditating. Who's he meditating on? Sankara Saniti said. He's impartial, he sees good in others, everyone. He ignores the bad qualities, which is very rare quality to have. Even Lord Ram worshipped Lord Shiva because Shiva is his very dear devotee. In the, one of his qualities is the greatest devotee, Vishnam Nam Nithasambhu. He has a special relationship with Lord Krishna. Shiva holds the keys to get us out of this world, and Krishna holds the keys to get us into his world, spiritual world. So he also appeared as uh, Shankaracharya. There are 12 great authorities in preaching God consciousness. And Shiva is one of them. So he's one of the 12 Mahajans as well. And his disciple succession is known as, oh, just one second, I've just got uh, uh, a block drain. So somebody just knocked at the door. I'll just be one second. Oh, just one second. Okay, so he also known as the Vallabh Sampadaya. The current Brahma Sampadaya is known as the Madhav Gaudiya Sampadaya, which is what the Hare Krishna movement belongs to. Lord Shiva appeared as Sankaracharya in 686 AD to preach this Mayavad philosophy, which is a philosophy that we are all one with God. So we are God. And he did that in order to uh, counteract Buddhism. So what happened was uh, there was a lot of misuse of the Vedic scriptures and animal sacrifice was predominant. Oh, sorry. So Lord, um, the Lord sent Lord Shiva to stop the um, Buddhist philosophy. And unfortunately, the Lord uh, requested him to reestablish the Vedas on the basis that one can become God. He didn't like the idea, but he did it anyway. And then the four Sampadaya gurus came after that and counteracted the Mayavad philosophy as well. <laughs> of course, as Shankaracharya, and we've sung many bhajans, or Karuna has sung many bhajans where Sankaracharya um, explains about the personality of Godhead. 
And especially at the end of his pastime, he preached the Vaishnava philosophy, Bhaja Govinda, Bhaja Govinda, Bhaja Govinda, uh, Mudha Mate. So he was basically saying, oh, you fool, chant the name of Govinda, chant the name of Govinda, chant the name of Govinda. So many pastimes, Lord Shiva, he appears out of the anger in this world, out of the ang due to the anger of Lord Brahma. What happened was Lord Brahma created the four Kumaras who decided to take sannyas immediately. He became angry and from that anger came uh, Lord Shiva. There you go. Rudra was manifested at that time. He's, of course, married to Parvati. They have two children, Ganesh and Kartikeya. Amazing personalities. He received Ganga uh, on his head when she flowed from the spiritual world. Lord Ramachandra worshipped Shivling before crossing into Sri Lanka. And this is often a point of confusion. Um, many, many people claim that uh, you know, Shiva is mm, superior to Ram, but actually this is a situation where the devotee, Ram is so uh, wonderful, the Lord is so wonderful, he worships his own devotee, so in this case he worshipped uh, Shiva. In order to defeat Ravan, there was an etiquette, because Ravan was the devotee of Shiva. So Ram wanted to observe the etiquette of requesting the permission of Shiva to defeat his, devo his devotee, Ravan. This is the Shivling, worshipped by the Lord. And in Krishna Leela, Lord Shiva came to have darshan of baby Krishna. Um, and Mother Vrishoda was terrified. She was thinking, who is this un unkept person who's got skulls around his um, shoulders as a garland, so covered in ashes. I'm not going to let you see my Krishna. You scare him. But then Krishna started crying and wouldn't stop. And Puna Masi asked Yashoda, What's happened? Somebody came to see him. I didn't let him in. Who? She described me. Ah, oh, she said, No, he's an important person. Get him. Uh, get him back so that you can have the version of Krishna. So then. She did, and they had a fantastic uh, reunion, if you like. Lord Shiva was and allowed to enter into the Rasa Leela as Gopeshwar. He wanted to come and taste that Rasa Leela. Of course, only females are allowed in the Rasa Leela. Um, so, Lord Shiva was um, bathed in the Akund and turned into Gopi, known as Gopeshwar. And there's a temple dedicated to Lord Shiva, Gopeshwar Mahadev in Vrindavan. This is actually the first temple that we go and see, have darshan before going to any of the other temples, it's very important. And this is in the evening, they will dress uh, the linga as a gopi. Looks really amazing. As a Dvaita Charya, because he is also a um, incarn partial incarnation of Shiva and Vishnu, he forced Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to appear on earth. Lord Chaitanya also met Lord Shiva and spent three days together on his tour in the south of Bharat. And there's a famous uh, uh, version that Lord Shiva had of Mohini Murti, who is um, a uh, avatar of Lord, Lord Vishnu. Very attractive avatar. And he ran after her. Mm -hmm. Many other pastimes, many, many, many pastimes. Now, Lord, Krishna, Lord Shiva glorifies the name of Ram to Parvati. At Kashi, when somebody dies uh, at um, uh, Vanaras, also known as Kashi, 
they become liberated. So many people go there to, to die. What happens? Lord Shiva explains that because he always chants the name of Ram and Vayu, wind, spreads the name everywhere in Kashi, people become liberated. Ganesh is also... Why Kashi Prabhu? Sorry? Why only Kashi? Kashi, the, uh, Var Var Varnasi, that's his, that's his favorite place um, in Bharat. That's his favorite place. So he's always there. He's always chanting the name of Ram there. And uh, the wind is taking the name of Ram everywhere. And there's a beautiful temple there of uh, Lord Shiva. That's his favorite place. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm not quite sure why it's his favorite place, but that is his favorite place. And many, it's a tradition amongst the, um, okay, Jenti's put something there, one second. Jenti's put, Shiva created Kashi for Parvati. Okay. Um, so, yeah, many people go there actually, uh, elderly people would go to Kashi to die there. Yeah. And it said that when somebody dies in Kashi, Lord Shiva actually comes and chants the name of Ram into the ears of that person. So a very interesting place. <clears throat> so what else is there? Um, this uh, very interesting, this family of Lord Shiva. Right? If you look at their carriers, right? The carrier of Parvati is a lion. And lions and bulls don't get on. Shiva's is a bull. Nandi. This is Durga Mata's lion. Ganesh's carrier is a mouse. But Lord Shiva also has snakes around his neck. And snakes, he swallows up mouse, mice. So that's interesting. And Kartikeya has a peacock as a carrier, and peacocks eat snakes. So it's amazing that they never have fights as a family, especially when you look at their different carriers. And the reason for that is because they're always chanting the name of Ram. This is what Dochiva is told to Parvati. Very interesting. So, Let's have a look at some of the differences between the different worshippers. Right? Shivites wear tilaks across the forehead, like this. And usually the tilak is made of ashes. The Vaishnavas have so many different types of different tilaks. And usually they go straight up the forehead, two lines up the forehead. Shivites believe that the world is an illusion. It doesn't really exist. But Vaishnavas believe that the world is real, it does exist, but it, it's temporary. And therefore, it is illusory, but it's not, um, it's not that it's not real, it's just temporary. Shaivites, they study Shiv Puran, Vaishnavas study Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavad Puran mainly. Shaivites believe that God has no form. Or his form is just light emanating from the Lord, or just some light rather, from a jyoti. And that they can merge with God. This is one of the big things. That's the Sankaracharya's philosophy. But Vaishnavas believe that the ultimate form of God is personal and we cannot, we can merge into God, but we don't want to merge into God. We want to become his servant. Some Shaivites smoke bang, mm -hmm. cover themselves in ashes. And the reasoning is, this is what Shiva does, so we can do it as well. Well, by that logic, one should be drinking poison as well. <laughs> so how do Vaishnavs observe Shivratri? Um, so Shivites, they would uh, stay up all night, they would fast. So how do Vaishnavas do it? Guru Sadhu Shastra advises that we honor Lord Shiva as the greatest devotee. 
Nan Maharaj and the Bijabasis would sometimes go to the temple in Gujarat to observe Maha Shivratri. Their mood was to pray for the welfare of Krishna, to pray to be more attached to Krishna. So these are good prayers. Please, my dear Lord Shiva, help me become closer to Krishna. You're so close to Krishna. You're, you're the best devotee. Similarly, gopis would worship Katyani Devi and Lord Shiva to have Krishna as their husband. Shira Prabhupada approved the worship of Shiva in the right mood, not as God, but as his devotee. Advaita Charya is an incarnation of Shiva. And as a member of the Panchatattva, we worship him every day. Fasting is option. Some people do Ikadashi fast. <laughs> this is an Ikadashi. They would often have so many discourses. Lord Shiva would be explaining the Bhagavatam, for example, to Parvati, together with all the other saints, sages. Narad Munbi would often be present. So he's really a unique, unique personality, really extraordinary personality who we should uh, respect have him in high, high esteem and uh, because he's the greatest Vaishnav. Any questions, any comments? Prabhu, I want to know, you know, in Kailash or Mount Kailash, Lord Shiva lives there as well? Yes. He, he, he lives there. Is that what you're asking? Yes, because I'm a bit confused by... Yeah. yeah, that's his residence. But he has many places, actually, where he lives. He expands as 11 Rudras. So the different Rudras have different places within the universe. Some live um, in the planets below Earth. Uh, some live in the planets above Earth. He's got several places of residence. He, um, Kailash is, uh, and he, yeah, Kailash is one of his uh, prominent residences. And uh, you can even visit Kailash because it, there is a representation of Kailash in Bharat. Uh, we've never been there, but uh, it's very interesting. Um, is that okay? Yes, Robert, thank you. Yeah. So one day it'd be interesting to try to make a trip to Kailash. It's quite an austere journey, I hear. Um, but uh, it'd be very interesting to see, seek Mount Kailash. It is possible. Mm -hmm. So Jint is saying the Ra name of Ram is written on Gopeshwar in Vrindavan on Shivratri. Oh, okay. Thank you for sharing that. Anything else? Anybody else? Okay. So, Mahashivratri ki jai.